Hi, this is Ken Kaplan from the New England Motorcycle Museum, and today I'm proud to be representing this absolutely gorgeous, extremely rare, holy grail of 80s Honda Superbikes. This is the CB1100R limited edition homologation special. This bike, there was only 1,500 of these produced, and I would venture to guess most of them were destroyed. This one's been in museum display here at the New England Motorcycle Museum for the past year, and it sat in the Superbike universe holy grail of collections there for about 10 years. Um, the uh, title is in hand. I've got the actual uh, Ohio state title on the motorcycle from the guy who imported it to the USA. That's a one owner bike. Um, other than uh, the title anyways, but it, it's actually was purchased by Superbike Universe, so technically a two owner. Um, and ask yourself, where are you gonna find one of these? I mean, this thing is extremely, extremely rare. It's a limited edition Honda Homologation Special Superbike, never imported into the US. This one's here, and I can't say that I've ever seen another one uh, in the United States. Um, it was built out of the fabled RCS division of Honda, which was pre-HRC. It's a pre-HRC special. The CB1100R is an exotic model that was produced in limited numbers from 81 to 83. It's a single seat, fully fared sport bike based on the Honda CB900F. The R suffix denotes a racing version. However, the CB1100R was a road legal machine produced by Honda and offered for sale to the public. It was produced only in numbers sufficient to meet the homologation requirements for the R to be classed as a production motorcycle and markets in the which it was sold. It was Honda's first homologation special, which makes it even more valuable, and was racing in the production class, racing in most major markets. So this was a factory super bike that they made enough so they could call it a production bike, and it dominated including Europe, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. It was never sold in the USA. So to find one in the United States in this condition is nearly impossible. You'll be the only guy to have one of these and pretty much promise you that. This particular bike was imported by enthusiasts about 20, uh, actually at this point around 25 years ago from the Netherlands. Uh, this, this story right here was written about 10 years ago by the owner of Superbike Universe, so it's about 25 years now. He then titled the bike and rode it all over the United States it has approximately 35,000 miles on it uh, from the previous owner, and the body is completely fiberglass, and the tank is hand-welded aluminum. The bodywork is in very nice condition, and the pair work is in mint shape as it was restored, and the body paint completely uh, was redone when Pete bought it and put it in the Super Book Bike Universe collection. So, um, <coughs> at this point, about 12 years ago, I think roughly 12 years ago that Pete purchased the bike, and he rode it around for a few years, and then it was drained of all oil and gas and has been in storage in the Superbike Universe collection since then. Certainly extremely rare, and definitely a must have for those with the RC30, RC45, etc. type of Honda collection. The motor, though similar to the CD1100F that was offered here in the United States, is in a much higher state of tune. It has an extremely rare Nico Baker 4-in-1 exhaust, which is pure and easy to be here. The bike has not been run for a few years, so it's going to need a full recommissioning for consumables. Uh, the tires, the oil, the battery, the plugs, the car, the sink, etc. Prior to riding, which, which we can do for you after the bike is sold, if you want to hire us to do that. We have an on-staff mechanic who's built uh, AMA Concourse Championship winning motorcycle restorations from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, obviously. He, he worked, he's more than capable of, of uh, doing recommissioning on this bike. He does frame up restorations for us. We normally charge $120 an hour for those services. Um, if you buy the bike, we'll discount it to $80 an hour and we'll go right through it and get it running or you can take it and do it yourself, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you want to pull the trigger, add this big boy to your collection and have it turnkey when it gets there, uh, not a problem, we can handle it. In 1981, the CB1100R won the New England the New Zealand Castrol Six Hour, ridden by Australia, Australian pair of Malcolm Campbell and Mick Cole. The CB1100R won the premier Australia, Australian production race in 1982, the Castrol Six Hour, in the hands of future 1980 500cc GP world champion Wayne Gardner and teammate Wayne Clark. Other CB1100Rs finished the race second, third, and fourth, with six CB1100Rs finishing in the top eight spots. So, six out of the top eight bikes with this homologation special. And we know they only made 1,500 of them, so you know most of them were hammered pieces. Uh, the final this condition is just extremely rare. The Australian success of the CB1100R led directly to the development of Suzuki's Katana 1100 homologation racing specials. So, um, 
In 81, 1,000 units were sold, followed by 1,500 per year in 82 and 83. The 82 and 83 models have different bodywork, including a full bearing, aluminum fuel tank, and a clean seat cover with a removable seat cowl. So there is actually a seat under the seat cowl going to ride double up with your girlfriend in the back. Um, the, uh, the 82 and 83 were largely similar with different paint scheme, rear swing arm, and front fork design. In 83, the Honda CD1100F was launched and essentially was a blend of the 1100R and the 900F for a broader market. The 81 CD1100 had a clean 115 rear wheel horsepower. Just an awesome bike. Um, the double upper cam engine was based on the one in the CD900F, keeping with its bore and stroke and increasing the bore from 64 to 70 millimeters, which it bumped at 161 cc's to 1062 from 900. Light and higher spec internals, including semi-forged pistons and bumpier, long duration cams, along with an increase in compression to 10.1 bump horsepower from a plain 95 on the 900 to 115 horsepower. And the, the torque went up also. Taller final drive gears than the 900s gave the R a theoretical top speed of 155 miles per hour. Today, 115 horsepower doesn't seem like a lot, but at the time, the R was a fire breather and the most powerful beast money could buy. Due to its being Honda's first race bike available to the public, a lot more than the usual one. Really beautiful detail right down to the shiny chrome mirrors. The 6.9 gallon gas tank is aluminum, and the del really delicious paint is laid down on top of the same sort of carbon fiber fairing Honda used on its factory race bikes long before we heard of carbon fiber. So um, it's just a beauty. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, let's see, 82 to 2017, it's 35 years old. Um, and it's an absolutely gorgeous shape. It is a museum piece. And again, ask yourself, when are you gonna find another one of these in the US or anywhere for that matter, because most of them got destroyed. If you're looking to build your collection, if, you're, if you wanna buy a classic Honda that's only going up in value, buy this bike. If you want an investment that's an outpace the stock market, buy this bike. If you want a piece of modern art to just to look at it, even if you're not gonna ride it, um, then it's an excellent investment also. I could come up with a thousand reasons uh, why you told your wife you have to buy this bike. So um, it's just a fantastic machine. Why are we selling it? Well, we need to raise funds for the New England Motorcycle Museum. We're about $300,000 short of finishing the football field long main building. And uh, we're trying to raise the funds to put it together. So uh, Pete's gonna donate a portion of the sale to the museum. So it's going to a good cause. If you have any questions, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Um, we're here six days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturday 10 to 2. Uh, give us a call, come take a look at it, or if you want to purchase it, and we'll hang on to it till you get here, that's fine. Um, if you want to leave it here on display in the museum, as long as you like, you can. Or if you want to ship it right away, that's fine too. So good luck bidding on the bike. Hope it goes to a good home, and God bless America.